Hi, I'm Kendall with the Rawls Group. The old African proverb, it takes a village, illustrates the essential nature of a team approach to succession planning. Succession planning is a complex endeavor. As such, it requires leveraging the expertise of a diversity of backgrounds. Collaboration and different expert opinions provides a 360 degree approach, ensuring the possible, probable, and potential issues impacting your long-term vision are addressed. To provide insight into common questions received from business owners, we are leveraging the village of our valued strategic relationships. As you listen to this episode, you'll be able to immediately apply the key takeaways and you'll come back for more. Now we're going to focus on what kinds of things should owners do right now operationally to protect their business? One of the keys here is communication. By example, communicate with your clients to let them know that you are either open or will reopen shortly, just in a different way, perhaps. Use social media as a, to get your message out. And if your business follows the old adage 80-20, whereby 80% of your revenue is derived by 20% of your clients, focus on that 20% first. Second, communicate with your supply chain. Make sure you can get the product you need to sell. If needed, go ahead and try to get an alternative supply source. Three, communicate with your employees. Make sure they feel safe. Have you used the PPP loan, SBA loan, paycheck protection program for securing funds to make their payroll? Are you using the forgiveness program? Safeguard your, fac your facilities against the spread of virus. Review in detail your operations, how you do what you do. Can you adjust your processes to make them both safer and achieve better results or outcome? Are you using Zoom, Skype, and other ways to communicate in or out of the office. Think long-term. In this case, develop plans to stay in business over the next 12 to 24 months while the economy returns to the new normal. This will give time, hopefully, for the development of a vaccine so everybody will feel safe getting out of their house. Look for new opportunities. In every difficult situation, there are those businesses that will prosper. Are you make, can you or will you make plastic separators, masks, and other items needed right now? And finally, remember cash is king. Set up weekly or bi-weekly cash flow meetings with your staff, stretch your payables, talk to vendors, landlord, and suppliers, and letting them know you, you plan to reopen and stay in business. Thank you. Well, a quick list of items that I'd want to cover as an owner during the sign to protect your business would be one, conserve your cash. You will need liquidity during these uncertainty times. As we all know, cash is king. Two, scrub and study your historical data. I would look at uh, year over year data and also the last six months during this COVID period. Look at it, glean what you can from it to make projections going forward so that you can weather a period of reduced demand and forecast out how long you think you can weather that based upon your, your finances, both your liquidity from a cash flow standpoint and maybe available lines of credit. Three, look at your supply chain. 
do you have contingency plans or alternatives if one of your suppliers were to go offline because of their own challenges, financially or health related? Four, we've discussed this before, what are your COVID policies and procedures? Communicate those to your customers and employees. Let them know what you're doing to keep them safe during these difficult times. And then five, look at your state laws. Are there any shield laws available to you that require specific postings or other actions that you can further take advantage of to protect your business during these challenging times? I'll start with measuring and building confidence within your bench strength. Um, I'd ask myself questions as, do, you, I have, do I have the right people? Are they trained? And are they playing in the right position? The other thing I would look at is, uh, you know, your state and local uh, health guidelines, if they pertain to you or not. Um, are you following the right mask uh, requirements, uh, the hand washing signs? Do you have those available? Um, are you carrying the right COI and liability insurance uh, within your, your business um, to ensure liability? Um, <clears throat> I mean, we're, we're living in different times now. Um, you have people that just walk in your business looking for an opportunity to see what you're lacking or what you may have missed. Um, so be aware of the liabilities that may leave your business uh, in a vulnerable state as well. These may be more than just debt that your business is carrying. Uh, there's an opportunity to hunt down. The opportunity is to hunt down and make profit, not pay off bills currently. And it may be that you are exposed to increased liability due to excess or frozen cap capital held in your business. Um, so I would say unless you're a bank, um, you should not be operating as such. Um, the next opportunity I would say is that June interest rates were showing at 1.01, .01, uh, the, the AFR, the long-term AFR. This means that a dealer could sell an asset to his or her ch child uh, via a 20-year installment note at that 1%. Um, that would be a long-term play, which is a, the lowest rate we could find historically. Um, the next component I would also look at is uh, the lifetime exemption um, is all time high at 11 and a half uh, million right now. So if things change in November during the election, um, we could probably see a, a decrease, um, probably half if not more. So it's, it's a great opportunity to use it or lose it. Thank you to our strategic partners, The Village, for participating and sharing your perspective. Do you have a burning question you want to discuss with an expert? Feel free to submit it via the Ask an Expert link featured on the page. Continue to listen to this series now or come back later for more. Each question featured may want you to learn something new.